You're looking in the mirror and you're asking yourself, why am I here? Why do I have to feel this pain? And you really start to question God. You start to question life. You know, some of us, we believe in just a being out there. So we question that being. Why did you make me the way that I am? I would have been so much better if you made me this way. I would have been so much better if you made me to think that way. I would have been so much better if you gave me a different environment. But we have to remember that God has power over the clay. Now, this is not just the clay which is your body, but this is the clay which is the world. He fashioned everything in his likeness and evidently he can do whatever he wants. If you find favor with him, he'll find favor with you. Stay tuned for this message entitled Power Over the Clay disappointed so it says here i say the truth in christ and this is coming from romans chapter 9 and it's verse 1 through 5 and it says i say the truth in christ i lie not my conscience also bearing me witness in the holy ghost that i have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart for i could wish that myself were accursed from christ from my brethren my kinsmen according to the flesh who are israelites to whom pertains the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises who are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came who is over all God bless forever amen now we obviously feel the stress right that Paul is feeling as he even remembers and thinks about his family he thinks about the other Israelites that are going down that same path of destruction and he's thinking about well what makes me so different when is my time when am I going to falter when am I going to sin when is God going to let go of me because he sees he looks he glances in people's lives and he says look how they think that they're living yet they're dead and the Holy Ghost bears witness of these things and a great heaviness falls on Paul. Just like sometimes it falls on us because we see our brethren who we used to admire. We see that they're good in everything that they do. Only for them to fall into sin. They start using drugs. Start using profanity. Right? They grow distant from you. No longer want to speak to you any longer. And you're thinking, well, I thought... They were perfect. You know, you worship them. You idolize them. And now you're thinking, wait a second. If they had all this to offer to the world, and yet they slipped and fell, what about myself? Well, what about you? That's a, that's a good question. You have to get disappointed with this world to a point where God wouldn't get disappointed with you. If you see how easy it is to lose Christ, to lose the pathway, to lose your conscience of right and wrong, good and evil, it is up to you to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Now, don't get it confused. You can't find God, but God can find you. But once he has found you, what are you going to do? It's kind of like once you've met a millionaire, right? What are you going to say? Wow, you're a millionaire. Are you going to tell them about your dreams, your aspirations, where you want to go in life? What have you done in life? Are you going to sell yourself because you want to be friends with him? You know he could profit you, right? And that's the same thing with God. You know he could profit you. So you have to continue to sell yourself. How do you sell yourself, right? You got to have a resume. You have to have a list of things that you have done. Now, this is different from works, right? Because you may do a list of things and think that the work is done, right? That's why it's called works. But when you're trying to sell yourself, there is no, you're always looking for an opportunity to showcase yourself, especially in the sight of that individual. Now, God is everywhere. He sees all things. So that means what? You have to show forth the praise that is due unto his matchless name at all times. Think about Paul here. He says they were Israelites. 
They had the glory. They had the covenants. They had the giving of the law. They had the service of God. They had the promises. They had everything. Everything. Yet, it meant nothing. Because if you don't use what God has given you, it means nothing. Christ came to save you. Not to just allow you to speak the words and say, well, I'll no longer be a sinner. But he wants you to change your mortal body, your way of thinking, your way of feeling. That you could feel Christ and be Christ-like. He doesn't want you to look into the mirror five years, one year, ten years down the road and be disappointed. Because you're thinking about all in which you could have done, but you didn't do. You could have held your peace. You could have helped that person. You could have gone the extra mile. And you look at, back at these things. When you see God's glory, when you see him come back for us, I hope that you're not going to be disappointed. I hope that you'll be able to receive him with open arms, seeing that you've done everything possible to hold on to him. And that's where mercy starts to step in. When you have done everything, then God could do everything. But when you limit yourself, you limit God. Because don't forget, Christ and Satan is in constant warfare. Satan accuses the saints daily. He's going to say, why are you saving them? They didn't try their best. They faltered and then they asked forgiveness. Why are you going to save them? Right? So just think about this. Don't be disappointed in yourself. God wants you to feel good about yourself. He wants you to know he has power over the clay, which means whatever you commit in your mind that you want to do in Christ, ask him for help. Whatever you want. You want to stop sinning. You want to stop lying. You want to stop cheating. You want to stop stealing. You want your wife back. You want your husband back. You want your children back. You want God back. Ask him. Believe. You'll receive him.